More than 300 years ago, the first pioneers crossed the oceans to a new world. A promise called it. The promise of a land where a man could build his own house, farm his own acres, raise his children in freedom. They carved from the wilderness an empire of agriculture and industry. They set for themselves new and higher standards of living. And yet, in one of the great river valleys of America, something went wrong. When you look at Franklin Roosevelt's assessment of the condition of the country in, in 1932 and 33, um, he identifies the South as, as, as the number one economic problem in the, in the country. Uh, and the Appalachian region itself was probably the most heavily affected areas uh, in, the, in the South. It was probably the poorest, most isolated part of the South. Uh, very little electricity. Folks were, were living in, in conditions that were very much like uh, mid-19th century uh, conditions. Uh, uh, you know, when, when the sun went down, they went to bed. The struggle to scratch a bare living from the reluctant soil. If you look at the farmers, you know, they're going through these droughts in the, in the 20s and early 30s, and uh, they're having serious erosion problems in the valleys up and down the river, so you'd go from a drought to a heavy rain. Destruction from the sky. Uh, without the flood control that comes with TVA, you know, you have these massive destructive floods that come out of the, uh, uh, the a river uh, basin, the river valleys that come out of the Appalachian Mountains, rivers like the, the Hiawassee and the Ocoee, you know, they flood, and then, then of course all the creeks that free, feed into those rivers. And so you'd have this cycle of, uh, of drought, then serious destructive floods, uh, a lot of loss of life in these valleys up and down the, uh, the, uh, the Tennessee River, in the Tennessee River Valley. Uh, it's a very serious uh, economic problem and it's a serious uh, a safety issue. We are at the Chickamauga Dam on the Tennessee River. It's a, a Tennessee Valley uh, Authority project from 1940. Uh, the dam was dedicated in 1940 by Franklin Roosevelt, a part of a, a large network of dams that were built up and down the Tennessee River from between 1933 and the early 1940s. An act was passed creating the TVA, the Tennessee Valley Authority. President Roosevelt told the nation that the project would set an example of planning not for this generation alone, but for all the generations to come. The Tennessee Valley Authority was uh, one of the early New Deal projects. Uh, it was really a, a project and a concept that had been uh, uh, under consideration for some years before Franklin Roosevelt became president. Uh, Frank Norris, a Nebraska senator, uh, was looking to, to help improve the, the quality of life uh, in the Tennessee River Valley, uh, to bring flood control, uh, to generate some electrical power, uh, and to uh, improve the lives of, of the people living in the Tennessee River Valley. It's one of the poorest regions in the country uh, at the end of the 1920s, and it's a serious uh, uh, attempt at remaking uh, the social and economic lives of the people living in the, in the River Valley from Knoxville all the way to the Ohio River. And Chattanooga had been struggling with, with flooding problems and this is a town that had become the center of the, of the National Railroad Network in the 1850s. Uh, this is a town that had be, become a, an important uh, uh, manufacturing city in the, in the South and gosh in the nation for that matter in the late 19th century. But until this dam goes in, until this dam is shut up in 1940, uh, the city experiences massive flooding. Uh, you know, there's always the, the, the dramatic stories of the 1867 flood when the military bridge that the U.S. Army had built during the Civil War was washed away. Uh, flood waters all the way back up to where the National Cemetery is today, which is about four and a half miles from the riverfront. So with, the, with this project, the, those, those problems uh, uh, were finally taken care of. If you think of, of federal projects that have done good for people and done uh, you know, almost unmitigated good, this is, this is probably the project that you would hold up. Uh, if you think about the, the, the changes in people's lives, the, the uh, uh, transitions that happened just in a very short period of time. I mean, imagine uh, being a farmer uh, up in the, in the northern reaches of Hamilton County uh, and living in a 19th century style, chopping wood and, and, and drawing water out of the well. And in the course of, of eight or 10 years, uh, you have electric lights and you have electric pumps. And it just, it completely transforms the way that, that people experienced everyday life in the valley. 
You've seen the dams, but they're only part of the plan. The rest of it is up to you. The TVA was created for you. We want you to use it. The dams really are, are certainly a, a major part of the project itself. But uh, education programs, uh, beyond the rural electrification programs, you're also seeing uh, educators going out from TVA who are, who are teaching people how to use new irrigation systems, uh, teaching them how to use electricity to pump water to their fields, uh, teaching them uh, about fertilizers that are being uh, manufactured and plants that are going on up or are being built up and down the river, uh, and thinking about modernizing agricultural practices. And to, you know, in some ways, that, that may be the bigger transition that happens. I and mean, you know, certainly the, the dams themselves create some stability and some regularity in the lives of the people who are living along these rivers that flooded over and over and over again. Um, but when you, when you get that, when you get that just, uh, that experience regularized and then you begin to think about how to, uh, to farm in a scientific basis uh, and, and use fertilizer and, and use electricity to, to irrigate the, the, the fields themselves is, is, a, is a really important impact that TVA had. You know, TVA was, was was putting up in, in all the towns up and down the river, they were putting together uh, uh, demonstration kitchens uh, for people to learn how to use electric uh, appliances in their kitchens. Uh, and it, it's, you know, those are, those are little, they seem like little things, but uh, you know, when people are making that, you know, this is a big jump. This is a huge, huge, huge acceleration. Uh, and, and, and the way that education went hand in hand with the, with the infrastructure that was being built, I think is, is as important uh, as what was being built in the dams and the, the other facilities. The dam builders, 200,000 of them in all, 4,000 on this one project. When you listen to some of the, some of the old timers talking about TVA, and not only, you know, they talk about the opportunities that came through electricity, but they also talk about the opportunities that came through the jobs that came with TVA. Uh, and as a federal agency, there are many opportunities that are open to African Americans through TVA that would have not come to them otherwise. Um, so, you know, you think, you think about uh, upward mobility of a, of a very poor uh, African American community in this region. It's a backwards poor place without TVA. What happens if there is no TVA? Well, certainly the flood problems continue on. Uh, certainly the everyday lives of the people who are affected by the, the, the introduction of, of inexpensive electricity uh, don't change in those dramatic ways that they did in the 1930s, the 1940s. I think the area remains stuck in a, in a cycle of poverty uh, that, that would have been very, very difficult to, to pull out of. Um, I think that the, that the scientific know-how that comes with TVA helps farmers begin to think differently about the way they're using their land, uh, about, um, uh, you know, about fertilizers and about, uh, about irrigation. I, it, it, it remains stuck in 1872.